Hello and thank you for joining us. In this video, we're going to look at uh, graphing a logarithmic function from transformations. So let's say that we have h of x is log base 2 of x and s of x is negative log base 2 of x minus 1 plus 2. State the transformations needed to map the graph of y equals h of x to the graph of y equals s of x. Well, we can look at this and say, hey, you know what? The s of x really seems to be given as negative h of x minus 1 plus 2. All right, so the transformations that I have for part a seem to be that I'm going to have a reflection in the x-axis, right? Then a translation of one unit to the right. And lastly, a translation of two units upwards. Right? Or we can say in the positive y direction. All right? So that is what we have for our translations. Now, write the domain and range of S. Write the domain and range of S. So in order to be able to more comfortably write the domain and range, it can be useful to know, well, what's our basic parent function? Our basic parent function for log base 2 is going to be something like this, whose domain is x is greater than 0 and whose range is all real numbers. Okay, well, if we're reflecting in the x-axis, that's affecting my range, but my range is all real numbers, so reflecting my range is still going to be all real numbers. Okay, so what that tells me then is for part b, right, range is all real numbers, right? Our range is all real numbers, then if we consider our domain, our x values. Well, we translate one unit to the right, and so that's going to move our entire graph one unit to the right. Translating upwards in the positive y direction is an is effect on the range, but if the range is all real numbers and I move it up by two units, not changing it. So that means that for my domain, oops, let's uh, come in here, all right, that the domain is all values of x greater than 1 because I've moved that vertical asymptote from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So I've written my domain. I want to sketch the graph clearly identifying intersections with the coordinate axes and equations of asymptotes and the coordinates of at least three points on the graph of s. All right, so quite a bit to do there. So let's see what we can have here. So we're going to set up our axes. All right, we'll just say that these are our axes. Here we go. Looks great. All right, so we're told that we've moved to the right by one unit. So I'm going to say that for my purposes, here's my movement to the right. That's x equals 1. And that I'm going to... Uh, reflect the x-axis and move two units upwards. So my graph might look a little something like that. So maybe I can find this x-intercept and maybe I can find another couple of key coordinates on this graph since I need to have the coordinates of key points. So I clearly identified the equation of the asymptote, but I still need to identify the coordinate axis intercept. So I need to identify this x-intercept. Well, s of x is going to be equal to 0 if 2 is equal to the log base 2 of x minus 1, which means that 4 is going to need to be equal to x minus 1. How did I get 4? Well, I can exponentiate both of these from the common base of 2. So an exponential function with its same base logarithm are inverses, right? And then do the same to the left side of the equation. So 4 needs to be equal to x minus 1. 
right? So therefore, we know that x needs to be equal to 5, so I have this point 5. So one of the points on the graph of f is the point 5, comma, 0. Okay. Then other points, other points. Well, let's just find easy numbers to work with, right? So one easy number to work with would be if x is equal to 2, right? Because if x is equal to 2, s of 2 is going to be the negative log base 2 of 2 minus 1 plus 2. And we know that 2 minus 1 is 1, and log base 2 of 1 is 0. So we know that s of 2 is simply going to be equal to 2. So we might say that, hey, I know this point right over here is the point 2, 2. And maybe I don't want it that way. Maybe I want this point right over here. We'll see. We'll say that that point is 2, 2. So I also have this point 2, comma 2 on this graph. Okay. And I need a third point, so let's see here. If I have log base 2 and the interior was 4, that would help me out. But that would be x of 5, so I already have that. But if this interior part was, let's say, 8, well, log base 2 of 8 I know is 3 because 2 to the third power is 8. So I could look at this and say, hey, here's another useful point. If x is equal to 9, if x is equal to 9 s of 9 is going to be the negative log base 2 of 8 plus 2, which will be negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. So I could say that, hey, here is x is 9, and here is negative 1. And so I've got then my three points for this graph, and this being the graph of s of x. So graphing a logarithmic function, talking about transformations. It's important to understand the details. You may be more adept and go through this quickly, but being quick at something does not mean being right at something. So make sure you understand the process. Thank you very much for your time.